In this video, we're going to talk about some basic student Chromebook troubleshooting tips to help you maximize your instructional time. Now, while all of our Bite Size PD align to our CSD MTSS framework, this session doesn't align to anything in particular, rather the ability to quickly troubleshoot Chromebook issues can help keep students on task and really make your instructional time efficient to help you meet your instructional goals. Today's learning intentions and success criteria are as follows. I am learning troubleshooting tips and tricks for student Chromebooks to save instructional time and keep students on task. And you will know that you are successful when you can quickly troubleshoot common Chromebook issues and identify off-task student behavior. Some of the things we're gonna be talking about include general Chromebook troubleshooting, sound, microphone, and cameras not working, fixing the language of a Chromebook, quick screen fixes, cursor fixes, catching sneaky sites that students shouldn't be on, finding downloads on a Chromebook, and taking screenshots on a Chromebook. Uh, in addition, we will talk about how to fill a fillable PDF and save it on a Chromebook. I forgot that in the agenda. So here, let's start with some general Chromebook troubleshooting. Uh, this is great for when the Chromebook is being glitchy, if it has frozen or is otherwise not performing in the way you would expect it to. So the first go-to that we always recommend is turn the Chromebook off and back on again. And to do that, you will click on the clock in the bottom right corner. You can then click on the power icon. Once it powers down, you would simply turn it back on by clicking the power button on the keyboard. You can also check the Wi-Fi network. Uh, you'll see that also under the clock and on our screen, it is next to the number three. You want to make sure that the student Chromebook is on CSD auth. This is also something to check if you're having trouble seeing a student's Chromebook when using Land School. The third thing you can try after you have turned the Chromebook off and back on again and checked the Wi-Fi network is what's called a hard reset. We don't wanna do this often, but it is one way to reset a troublesome Chromebook. To do this, you'll turn the Chromebook off. So again, you will click the clock in the bottom right corner of the Chromebook and then the power icon. Once the Chromebook is off, you will hold down the refresh key on your keyboard. And that looks like the little circle with the arrow. So kind of like the refresh icon on your Chrome browser. So you will hold down that refresh button on the keyboard and also hit the power button on the keyboard. Once the Chromebook starts booting back up, you will release the refresh button on the keyboard. If none of those things seem to work, then of course I would recommend putting in a ticket to your field tech and probably having your student switch devices. Another common issue on Chromebooks is the sound or microphone not working. If the sound is not working, of course, the very first thing you want to do is make sure the Chromebook is not muted. To do this, you can either use the volume buttons on the keyboard, or as you can see on my screen, you can scroll down to the clock, excuse me, move your cursor down to the clock, and then check your volume slider and make sure it is turned up. Now, if the Chromebook volume is turned up and you're still having problems hearing on the Chromebook, make sure there isn't a different volume setting for the site or app that the student is using. So for example, with YouTube, you might have your Chromebook turned volume turned all the way up, but on the video itself, there is another volume slider that may be turned down. So make sure the volume is turned up on the device and on the site or app being used if that site or app has its own volume setting. If you're having trouble hearing on the Chromebook and you're using headphones, make sure the headphones are securely plugged in. Otherwise, you can try unplugging them and plugging them back in. You can also change the sound or output settings on a site. So I will use Google Meet as an example. 
Oftentimes under settings, you can find audio and video settings. So here you'll wanna make sure that the microphone is whatever microphone you intend, as well as the speakers. So you can see here, my only option is speaker and my I have internal mic as my only mic option. Uh, but if I have multiple cameras, such as my webcam on my computer and an external web camera, you wanna make sure you're choosing the right one. Or if I have say wireless headphones versus my computer internal mic, I wanna make sure I have the right one chosen. So those settings are specific to different apps and sites. We also wanna make sure that we have enabled permissions in Chrome for the microphone. And so you can see here in this screenshot, next to the site URL, you can click on the lock icon, and then you can choose site settings. And you wanna make sure that you are allowing the microphone. So usually by default for microphones and cameras, you will see a little pop-up. You can see it here in a screenshot that asks you if the site can use your microphone and use your camera and you want to click allow. However, if that didn't work or if you clicked the wrong thing, you can always click on the lock icon and then you can click on site settings and make sure you allow the microphone and allow the camera for that site. Um, and it may make you, it will make you reload the site after you change those settings. Now, if the camera's not working, the first thing we recommend is to test to see if your camera is working on a different app or site. Uh, so for example, if the camera isn't working for a student to record in Canvas, have the student go to meet.google.com. They can just start a new meeting and check to see if it is detecting and using the camera. If so, uh, go ahead and close out of whatever app or site you're using where the camera isn't working. You can try opening it again. You can also follow those steps we previously discussed where you click on the lock next to the site URL and make sure that you have the camera set to allow. If the camera still doesn't work, you can try turning your Chromebook off and back on again. Again, you click the clock in the lower right-hand corner and click the power icon to power down. You can also check site settings for the camera. So we saw that a little bit earlier where I used Google Meet as an example. Again, the camera settings and the sound settings for different sites can be in different places and work in different ways. Uh, so the best thing to do is click on any sort of settings icon and see what your options are for camera input settings. Now we're gonna start talking about issues you tend to see when students are being sneaky. One thing students can do is they can change the language on a Chromebook so that everything on the Chromebook is say in Russian and they think it's really funny. This can be very intimidating, but you can absolutely fix this yourself. So one thing I recommend is taking a separate Chromebook that is still in English and following the steps that I'm about to go over in English on one Chromebook while you're fixing the other Chromebook that is in another language. And that's because it can be intimidating to try and fix the language when you don't actually understand the language. So it's nice to have it side by side with English. Or you can use this presentation, have this presentation pulled up on your computer, then have the Chromebook with the other language, and here's what you can do. You can start by clicking on the clock in the lower right-hand corner of the Chromebook in question, and you will click the settings icon. Once you get to the settings screen, things will look a little scary because you won't understand the language, but that's okay. We're gonna go ahead and click advanced, which will be the very last option until it is expanded. And you'll know that it's expanded because notice the little arrow is facing up. If the arrow is facing down, it will not be expanded and advanced is that very last option. But again, if you have a Chromebook in English pulled up alongside a Chromebook in another language and you're simply comparing, you'll be able to easily see where it says advanced. Next, you click on languages and input beneath advanced. And then you'll click on languages and input again, which you can see here next to number five towards the top of your screen. 
Then you'll find the, the language you want, English. You'll click on the three dots and you will check the box that says show system text in this language. Once you reset the language, it will, you will see the button to restart. Make sure you restart before you'll see that language uh, switch to English. So some more things students will do to be sneaky. They will enable high contrast mode, which is a, a sort of look where the colors are inverted. Uh, it reminds me a lot of the old school film negatives. So if you notice that the colors are inverted, you can start by clicking on the clock down in the bottom right corner of the Chromebook screen. You'll click on accessibility, which is that little person icon. And make sure high contrast mode is unchecked. It will be checked uh, if you see that the colors have been switched. It kind of looks like infrared vision almost. Students also enjoy turning on the full screen magnifier. So if you notice that the screen is zoomed in all crazy, you'll follow the same first two steps. Click on the clock in the bottom right hand corner and then click accessibility and you want to make sure full screen magnifier is unchecked. So the trick here is if everything's magnified, it's often hard to find the clock. We know it's in the bottom right hand corner, so you can take your cursor, pull it all the way to the right, and you'll notice the screen will start to scroll to the right, and then put the cursor all the way down at the bottom and the screen will scroll all the way to the bottom. Then you should see that clock. Another funny thing students do is they like to rotate the Chromebook screen so everything is on its side. An easy way to fix this is on the Chromebook keyboard. Hold down Control, Shift, and click that Refresh button along the top. Again, it is that circle arrow refresh button. And that will rotate it 90 degrees. So if your screen looks like the picture you can see here, then it'll be upside down, it'll be rotated this way, and then finally it will be the correct orientation. Cursor fixes. Two things you might notice is an extra large mouse cursor or a mouse cursor that has a ring around it when it moves and clicks. You can disable these two features by clicking on the clock in the bottom right hand corner. These features are located under accessibility. And you'll want to make sure large mouse cursor is unchecked if the, large, if the cursor is extra large. If there's that ring around the cursor, you'll want to make sure to uncheck highlight mouse cursor. Another thing we wanna make sure we do to help students to stay on task and maximize our instructional time when using Chromebooks is the ability to catch sneaky sites. Sure, you can get on a student's computer, use the trackpad, click on the icons at the bottom to see what they have open, or if you wanna be extra efficient and sneaky, you can walk up to the student computer Simply click on the See All Windows icon on the computer. That's along the top towards the middle. It looks like this box with the two lines next to it. And if you click on it, it will show you all of the students open windows at that time. So just like in the screenshot here, you can see this, likely you can see the screen they should be on as well as something open that they shouldn't have open. And students have learned that they can very quickly navigate between windows using their keyboard. Uh, and so they can hide a site before you walk by. So if you notice any suspicious behavior, you can simply click on that all windows button on the keyboard and see what the students currently have open. Other shortcuts for catching those sneaky sites if you want to open a recently closed tab, so for example, you think a student had a tab open doing something they shouldn't have been doing and they quickly close it as you walk by, you can hold down Control, Shift, and the letter T, and it will open any recently closed, the, the most recently closed tab. If you suspect that a student has, let's say, been in Canvas and then gone to a site of their choosing where they shouldn't be, and then quickly navigate it back to Canvas as you walked by. You can hold down the Alt key on your keyboard and click the right arrow. It will navigate forward. So to the most recent page they had open. You can also hold down Alt and click the left arrow to go back to see what page they were on previously. 
And you can view tab history by holding the left or right arrow in the window. So what we mean by that is that's not on the keyboard. What we mean is if you hold these left or right arrows, let's see if you can see my, there we go, you can see my cursor right here below the tab. I can hold down my back arrow and you would be able to see my tab history. So those are some quick ways to impress students with your tech skills and catch them in off-task behavior. Another issue we frequently see uh, is students will download something and because a Chromebook functions differently than a Mac or Windows computer, they might not be able to find what they downloaded. On a Chromebook, you can access downloaded files by going down to the bottom bar. And here you can't see it in my slide, so let me show you on my computer. I'm gonna scroll down here to the bottom bar of my Chromebook. I can click on this circle in the bottom left corner, and then I'll see the option to choose files. Once I click on that, I will see a list of files and file locations. I can choose downloads, and that's where I will see that downloaded file. So again, we go to the bottom left corner, click the circle, files, downloads. If students download a fillable PDF, they will also find this in downloads in the files folder. And in order to complete a fillable PDF, students need to download it from the website. They will then open the PDF in their files folder on their Chromebook. They will then fill in the PDF. Once they have filled it in, they need to right click on the file, now on a Chromebook, that is a two finger click. They will right click on that PDF that they have filled out and click save as. I recommend they rename the file and this will save the completed PDF to their files folder on their Chromebook so they can then submit the completed version that they have just saved. Again, they need to fill it out, right click on the PDF and save as. This is for completing fillable PDFs. Last little trick on a Chromebook is how to take a screenshot. Students can simply hold down control on their keyboard and then click that Windows button on the keyboard. Again, that is the key with the square and the two lines. This will save a screenshot to their downloads in their file folder on their Chromebook and they can open it from there and they can crop it and make other edits to it. And one thing that's kind of neat here, I'll show you on my screen, is I can control, I'm gonna hold down that Windows button, and then I see my screenshot here in the right corner and I can click copy to clipboard, and now it's ready for me to paste in a Google slide presentation or in a Google Doc, et cetera. If I don't click copy to clipboard, it will save to my files. So again, that is the circle in the bottom left corner, files, and we can find the screenshot under downloads. And there it is. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me at jenna.townsend at canyonsdistrict.org. You can reach out to your ed tech or you can reach out to your field tech. Other than that, I hope you have some very efficient instructional time with students on Chromebooks.